The beginning. The summary earliest English literature was in form of um, form of songs and legends. The language was language Um. The language, the earliest English literature was in form of songs and legends. The language was a combination of Latin, French and other tongues. Latin was the language used by the church for educational purpose. English was the language of the unlearned due to the efforts made by John Wycliffe and many others, a standard version of the Bible in English came out in 1611. Chaucer and Milton used English to write their poems and added to its dignity in the 17th century. There was an advance in scientific uh, thinking. These thinkers consciously choose to use simple and lucid English for expressing their thoughts. The English was later used for writing in all forms of literature. Okay. So, in Journals and Diaries, History of the Royal Society. The main characteristics of the literature after mid 17th century is that it is written from the head, not the heart. The human brain took over the control. The poems written by Dryden and others serve as chronicles of the time. Dairon can also be considered the first of English literature critics. He gave us his opinion on literary arts through his essay, preface dramatic prologues and epilogues. According to Dairon and Dairon, the purpose of literature is to give a picture of truth and literature must primarily satisfy the reason. The iron prose in the prose that is used for significant argument. It is logical and argument with almost a mathematical plainness. This period is also known in the history of English literature as the Sudan period. After a brief spell of purity and rule, Cromwell had spurred the scroll. Charles II was restored to the throne of England. Charles II was keenly interested in science and scientific development. The political, social, and literal, literary atmosphere in England was conducive condu to the development of the scientific temper. The historian writers were against the exclusive use of Latin quotations and classical allusions in writing. They emphasized 
flows reasoning rather than formatic fancy these writers believe in writing various forms of literature in accordance with the rule laid down by the ancient greek and latin writers this age also produced great philosophers the scope of philosophy is much wider than the scope of science philosophy aims at making inquiries and clarifying the very nature of reality a noted french philosopher of the time discredits for example began by doubting systematically and deliberately the existence of everything and explain his own existence as i think therefore i am philosophy in its own way contributed to the development of scientific temper of the age one interesting feature of literature of the age is portrait painting dryden gives us a sketch of a duke of Barringham in Abbasalam and Astolfo later on his development in the highly personal essay written by Abraham Fowler and fully developed by Lamb and Lazlip Lazlip has has lit there were uh, there were other span fascinating writers who did not write other the right for the they maintained diaries and kept a record of minutes details of their life once of these lead strain into the restaurant all its personalities emerged its political problem its custom and its smell Pepys diaries bring out with astonishing sharpness the thought process of the that age. A significant sign sign of the times in the foundation of the Royal Society is founded is about sixty other sixty to promote scientific research. We showed that the interest the interests and attitudes of the people were changing rapidly their interest was shifting from purely theological matter and was giving place to fresh time and in interest in it was indicated that people were growing more tolerant to victory and science cannot be hand in hand the stimulus to significant research also helped in the polarization of the conscience and the clear literary style in the year 1645 a few philosopher meet meet in london to discuss scientific question they met later met at oxford and then at jungsham college after the historian the king took active interest in the deliberation at those meeting and gave it in the name the royal society distinguished people like pepys and newtons were members of this society in his observation up to up on the prophecy of holy writ newtons Newton tries to provide a key to literary problems from a scientific standpoint. He tries to analyze the prophecy with the help of mathematics and tries to relate the symbols used in the book with the help of astronomical symbols. William. Harvey's works on the circulation of blood showed by original thinking was gaining around over a tradition and school bound one poets and pressmen of the time could not remain 
unaffected by these writing writers like sir thomas browning though literary style was not in the in tune with the style of the period failed to get the membership of the society his scientific writing experts their influence on the romantic writers of the 18th century as well shelley interested in chemistry is a well known sir humphry davy an outstanding scientist of his time was a close friend of coleridge and southey in other words the scientific temper which emerged in the 17th century had a long lasting effect on the literary produced in that century and the coming ones diaries and memories writers supplied one of the most remarkable divisions of prose of the period the development of the newspapers and the periodical is also an interesting literary sideline of the 17th century the civil war undoubtedly stimulated a public appetite for up to the minute news which have supplemented by a new way of living and thinking therefore in many ways can be considered the father of the modern periodical the most important of documentary works in the journal of the plague year the most well known of the diary writer, uh, writers and samuel pepys john evelyn and roger north in the, his uh, diary evelyn wrote an account of the great fire of his time his record are full and to the point he has given an apt the apt and complete description of life in the wet hall just before the death of charles ii samuel pepys was over a much more original writer pepys was uh, diligent able and patriotic this master diaries started his diary in 1660 he wrote his diary for 9 uh, years for some years he joined the naval force and during the time of the plague he had he uh, his clerks logged at greenwich his interests were varied and perhaps his wallet he made him a keen observer of his surroundings his diaries presents him as a man who was inquisitive childish clear headed when ambition and quarrelsome he was at one and the same time a hard and diligent worker and one capable of the total abandon abandon on enjoyment of the moment he had a zest of living there and there were a few things that did not interest him he had an eye for the stranger and novel occurrence in life in his works he seems to be looking upon life with the in quizity dinas and enthusiasm of a child his personality was versatile and he had an open and straightforward outlook there is no hypocrisy of affection in his writing which can be seen clearly from the passage from his diary his diary diary provokes provides a panoramic view of an age he had a great attraction for the uh, theater and in is said to have played crown from work and epi 
untied his pockets to enjoy it. The diary affords innumerable glimpses of plays and players and play watchers. These theatre goers was an exciting, if not always discriminating, critic. He makes stark comment about plays and uh, performance about a midsummer night's dream. He has commented the most in inside paid ridiculous play I ever saw in my life. There are details regarding dress in the diaries. The diaries in an honest record of all Pepe's virtues and his wise, his quarrel with his wife attraction be felt for woman and general happy deposition of his mind. He is critical of expense in excess in physical uh, in public. He describes the detailed life in the court and about the scandals around rumors of his death. It is I witness descriptions or are very absorbing. You find a graphic description of the plague in his diary. It began in the month of June in 1665. Pepe's notice houses marked with a red rose upon the door and Lord the have mercy upon us, written on them. The court filed to the country and Pepe to send his wife and his mother out of town. The following passage dated 12, 13 August 1665 appears in his diary. Pepe eyes witness descriptions are very absorbing. We find a graphic description of the plague in, the, in his diary. It began in the month of June in 1665. Pepe's notice House marked with the red cross upon the doors and Lord have mercy upon us, written on, on them. To count the country filled to the country and purpose to send his wife and his mother out of town. The following passage dated 12 and 13 August 1665 appears in the diary. The people die so that now it seems they are fain carry the dead to be buried on the daylight. The night's not suffering su su sufficing to do it in. And my Lord Major commands people to be within at a night or as they say, that the sick may have liberty to go about for hiring. There is one also dead out of one of our ships at the port, which troubles us mightily, the Providence fire ship, which have just filtered to go to the sea. But they tell me today, no more sick on a board, and this day, W. Bodham tells me that one is dead at Volwich, not far from Ropiar. I am too old. What a wife of one of the grooms at the door is dead at Cybri. Cybri. So that the king and the queen are specially to be all gone to Milton. Vitaly will turn the early of a Prembuki's house, Prembuki's house, three miles walk from Salisbury. The project to go there was soon ab abandoned, and the court moved to Oxford on 23rd. The plague victim was the wife of the groom in the service of the 
enquiry to the queen efforts were made to conceal the illness god preserves us in this passage pepe has described the psychology of the period of the plague such a large number of people died from the disease that bruels took place during daytime as well as night time any time uh, any news of death due to plague made people feel worried and upset people were terribly scared on his this disease pepe joins out that the royal family do change their loading after learning about the death of the wife of a groomer at the court so year later pepe survived and settled the second great catastrophe of the 1660s a great fire broke out at yuchal and perhaps pepe was the first to carry the news to the king he described in great details the science of destructions and distress people running there and hither uh, trying to have their possess uh, possessions some piled them into churches and friends houses still in act some transport their goods on boats on the rivers and this and much more is narrated by pepes with all the urgent actually of a modern running comment commentary the essence of the impulse of a diary writer uh, writer on writing his diary is self expression he writer writes on his own satisfaction he records his experience this imposes a sense of order upon the fragmentary business of living a diary provides a self portrait of some one who is not possessing and is completely off for for example swift character is truly revealed through his journal writers to stella the diary often reveals a side of the writer's personality which is quite contradictory to the one posed in public one very important diary writer of pepe's period is john l evelyn it was it is important to note that john evelyn was one of the founder member of that group of men interested in science and the import improvement of natural knowledge by experiment which became the famous royal society he was interested in drawing and music and interested he shared with his friends pepes his diaries opens in 1641 when he was 21 with a retrospective summary on his parentage birth place and boyhood he continued to write the diary till his death his diary contained a record of event which took place till nearly a month before his death he lived a long and busy life of nearly 65 years he borrowed generously from guide books topic bical work and newspapers of the day in order to supplement his personal observation his diary provide provides an account of the first blood transfusion and various experiments and discoveries made in his period his account of the great fire 
which broke out in London in September of the 1666 remains with Pepe, the best John, the best known contemporary description, which was, which has come down to us. All the sky was and was a fiery aspect like the top of a burning oven and the light seen above 40 miles around about the many night. God grant my eyes may never behold the light. Who now says about the thousand houses all in one flame, one flame, the houses and the crackling thunder of the impetuous flame flames, the circling of women and children, the hurry of people, the fall of towers, houses and churches was like who now saw about 10,000 houses all in one flame. The house was crackling thunder on of the impetuous flames, the sky shirking of women and children, the hurry of the people, the fall of the towers, houses and churches was like an hideous storm and the air all about so hot and inflamed that at last one was not able to approach it thus felt it his afternoon burning a resemblance of somebody or the last day. Evelyn describes the essence of the fire. The fire continued to burn many nights and could be seen from a distance of 40 miles. He describes in details the destruction is caused and how it affected human life. Later, and Evelyn submitted various proposals for rebuilding the destroyed areas of the most august city in the world. He was intensely concerned with the welfare of the capital. He was full of the plans for the improvement of its street and building and purifying its air of a factory smoke. His diary also provide an insight into the deep influence of religion on day-to-day -day life of people. The diary writers have played an important role, not only in literary development, but also in the recording of historical events. For the recreation of a past age, the diarists are perhaps our richest source of detail. They provided detailed accounts not only of major historical events but also a uh, personalities. The development, uh, the provided information about their social background, manner and moral, contemporary tastes and fashion in act creation, food and dress, the practice of diary writing and the publication continued another illusion personal who had made a mark through his description of major and minor events of his time in daniel therefore the writer of robinson crusoe and mall Flander. what defoe wrote was immediately connected with the sort of life he led and uh, with the with the friends and enemies he made throughout his life. He stuck to contempt, contempting on facts and day-to-day -day events of political significance. It was uh, only in the last decade of his life that he turned from fact to fiction. His fiction is, uh, however, remarkable like fact. It is the factual that interests him and even that which he invented has a ring of fact. 
this process may be seen at its simplest in the journal of the plague this journal provides a day to day account of great plague in 1665 therefore draws freely on printed sources and other available sources such as contemporary account of the plague mortality accounts on earlier london plague and was he had heard in later life from old people who who had lived through that terrible experience for the deformed must have been a small child of 5 or 6 when the plague occurred he is master at making this truth since ever poor all that he writes seems to come alive as it is very a matter of personal recollection depo favorites method in of authentically his narrative of providing us with detail so trivial and so apparently irrelative that we feel that uh, he gives us the following example to show how mortally afraid they were of contacting disease when i came to the post house as i went to put in my letter i saw a man stand in one corner of the yard and talking to another at a window and a third hand third had opened a door belonging to the office i saw a man standing stand in one corner of the yard and taking to another at a window and a third had opened a door belonging to the office in the middle of the yard lay a small leather purse with two keys hanging with it i asked how long it had lain there the man at the window said it uh, had a uh, lain almost an hour but that they had not meddled with it because they did not know but the person who dropped it might come back to look for it i had so much need of money so i seemed to go away when the man who had opened the door said he would uh, take it up but so that it that if the right owner came for it he should be sure to have it so he went in and fetched a pail of a pail of water and set it down hard by the pursue then went again and fetched some gunpowder and cast a good deal of powder upon the purse and then made a train from that which he had thrown loose upon the purse the train reaches about time and fetches out a pair of tongs red hot and which he had prepared i suppose on purpose and first setting fire to the train of powder that signed the purse and also smoked the air facially but he was not content with that but he takes up the purse with the tongs holding it so long till the tongs burn through the purse and the and then he shook the money out into the pail of water so he carried it in the money as i remember was about 13 shilling and 
some smooth words and brass father. In this passage, Depo succeeded in catching the attention of the reader. He talks about the man standing in one corner of the yard, thinking of the man who is looking out of the window, and the third man who has just opened a door in the post office just minute such minute details provide an air of authenticity to whatever depot writers from the conversation reported in the extract we went the impression that is normal criticism uh, circumstances and one of the four men would have pocketed the purse if one if no one else had been passing at that time but as several people are now involved a good deal of fuss is made about seeing to it that is that if the right over uh, over came for it he should be sure to have it he gives a detailed description of the process of disinfection the mention of the 13 shillings and some smooth groats and grots and brass patterns patterns brass patterns makes it sound most factual depot continue to be to use this circumstantial method for all his fictitious narratives it gives this fiction an appearance of truth his characters give in a world of pots and pans and tankards and spoons of druggist and skills for chess and trevigs that things with which we come in contact almost every day all of the four works contains more com comment regarding some factual base this life and, and the strange surprising adventure of Robin, robinson crusoe of york mariner were written by himself the memories of a caval caval rail cavalier written this score year ago by an english gentleman the fortunes fortunes and misfortunes of the famous mall flanders written from her own memorandum not unlike a journal of a, of the play here the mar martial used in defoe's robinson crusoe is also true enough the book is based on the adventure of alexander selkirk a scottish sailor who had lived along on the island of genio friend Fernandez, Fernandez, along with the account published by Wood Rogers, therefore also used the information he had obtained his from his read, reading of travel. In the passage now given, therefore completely. And, in other style the loosely constructed sentence and the attention he paid to the new minutes detail is worth nothing i went to all work upon his boat the most like a fool that ever man did not had any of his sense away i pleaded myself within the design with, without determining whether i was able to undertake it 
not but that the difficult of launching my boat came open into my head but i put a stop to my own inquiries into it but this foolish answer let us first make it i i will find some way or uh, other to get it along when it is done this was the most preposterous method but the eagerness of my fancy prevailed and to work i went i filled a cradle tree and i question much whether solomon ever had much uh, one for the building of the temple of jerusalem it was the 5 feet 10 inches diameter at that at the lower part next the stamp and 4 feet 11 inches diameter at the lower part next the stump and 4 feet 11 inches diameter at the end of the 22 feet where it listened and the and then part patterned into batches it was not without infinity labor that i filled this tree i was 25 days hacking and have heaving at the bottom and 14 more getting the braces and limbs and the vast spreading heat of it cult of after his after this it cost men month to shape it and dub it to a proportion and so something like the bottom of a boat it might swim upright as it out to be robinson crusoe in the above extract from defoe's robinson crusoe a description of robinson attempt at boat making in is given in its minutes details the extract the exact length of the stump is mentioned the number of days taken to fell the trees 